right? Hello, everyone. My name is Rob Clark, and I am joined by Roger Ravindere. Good afternoon. And this is the first edition of Ask Apogee Live. So the concept behind this is that we'll take commonly asked questions from our Ask Apogee inbox and answer them for you live. And maybe if we have some time, we'll answer some of your questions in the comments below. So if you do have any questions about Apogee gear, you can always head over to www.apogeedigital.com and click on the Ask an Apogee Expert button in the bottom right hand corner. So what we've done on this episode is we've compiled a lot of our common questions around the all new element series, which we have here. Indeed. And so we're going to bring up some of those questions that people have had about the element series and uh, talk about them uh, so you guys can understand them a bit more. So the first question that we get quite often is, what is the difference between Duet and Element 24? So Duet for iPad and Mac right. and the all-new Element 24. The all-new Element 24. You know, they both actually have the same number of inputs, outputs, uh, and headphone. Uh, so it's a really good question. First, obviously, Element is Thunderbolt connectivity to your Mac, and Duet is USB. Now, perhaps a little bit later, we'll talk about some of the advantages of Thunderbolt. But USB actually uh, has a few advantages of itself with, with Duet. Obviously, uh, Duet, you can connect up to your iOS devices, to your iPhone. In fact, uh, you're listening to us through a Duet uh, connected to an iPhone. Um, also, Duet is completely portable. It can be powered by your MacBook Pro itself running on batteries. So you can go anywhere and make great recordings. Of course, Element 24, requires uh, AC power for it to run. You know, Thunderbolt interfaces generally do require more AC. So that's uh, kind of one of the first initial differences, pretty obvious. What else you got? Some of the other differences is that, uh, of course, the Duet has that beautiful knob and built-in OLED display. So if you really like some tactile feel over your interface, it's got that iconic design that uh, is, uh, is kind of changed the industry. Um, some other things about Duet is it's a little bit more portable, it's a little bit smaller, it's got a breakout cable so you can unplug the cable, throw it in a bag, and it's a little bit more portable than uh, the Element 24. So from a tactile approach, it's more of a desktop interface, whereas the, uh, the Element 24 is kind of one that you'll put off to the side, plug in, and uh, keep connected at all times. Yeah, so, so and, and the story of how we came up with the interface, that's a, a good one we'll get to in a minute. Awesome. So uh, people talk a lot about Thunderbolt. This has right. kind of been going on for the past few years. So demystify us. What is Thunderbolt? Right. What are its benefits? What are its drawbacks? Right. And uh, really, it's the question between Thunderbolt and USB. Uh, if, you may, if you've been in audio, you remember back in the day, uh, all the best audio interfaces were connected using a PCI card. It was a card that you installed into your tower. Um, and uh, you had li you lined up in the PCI card slots. That uh, peripheral format was made for high bandwidth, low latency peripherals. That's exactly what an audio device is. And so Thunderbolt really is taking PCI format and putting it into a cable. It's really as simple as that. And so uh, inherent to PCI is this ability to direct connect your audio interface directly to the most important part of your computer, and that's its memory. To make it simple, really, the best way to sum it up is that Thunderbolt is sort of the super highway between your audio interface and uh, your computer's memory, um, and in fact, doesn't require a lot of CPU management. USB is kind of the side road, and you've got stop signs uh, and maybe even some toll booths along the way. You know, we've worked it out so that it really works reliable, reliably with audio, but it actually requires more of CPU power to manage all those virtual toll booths that are on the USB bus. So uh, Thunderbolt, higher bandwidth, lower latency, um, and uh, a lower CPU load to manage that connection. Cool. One thing, of course, that Thunderbolt is a Mac-only protocol. It's a computer-only uh, type of thing. So if you want to connect to an iOS device, of course, uh, or USB devices right. are still uh, needed for that. But if you're on a Mac or you're connecting to a computer, Thunderbolt is uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. I don't know. I remember opening up the sides of uh, Mac Pros and you have to slide in. Uh, you know, we have the P Symphony 64 PCI card. Yep. Sliding that in, screwing it together. It's like you're performing surgery. And right. now you can just kind of 
plug it into plug the side it in. of the computer. Yeah. Yeah. So and in some ways, you know, uh, Thunderbolt is uh, nothing new. It, it is PCI, but it's just in a, a new format. How about, uh, this is an interesting question that comes up quite a bit, differences between Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 2, the original Thunderbolt, any right. differences for audio? You know, for audio, frankly, it is a huge pipeline, and really, any Thunderbolt 1, 2, or 3 is completely sufficient uh, for uh, any audio needs. It really was built for high-capacity uh, video. All right. So, uh, so, uh, all right. Hmm. Here, here that we got some technical things on there. Uh, can everyone out there hear us? Uh, if you can't hear us, uh, you guys can hear us. All right. If anybody can't hear us, please comment uh, in the, the sign below. So, right. We're trying to stream out for the first time. So, uh, if uh, if anybody can't hear us, check on this. There. This is the beauty of live. Awesome. So, uh, we've got some more questions that people have been asking about the Element series. Uh, this is a pretty interesting one. So there's a lot of talk about talkback. Right. Um, I always used to have to use one of the extra inputs on my interface and put a 57 on the desk and waste an input on talkback. But now there's a bunch of new technology for talkback built into interfaces, like what's on Ensemble. Right. So the question is, some interfaces have built-in talkback now. But how does that work with the Element series? With the Element series. Uh, you know, we've done something rather clever with the Element series, whereby we're, we allow you to use your built-in mic, if you've got a MacBook Pro, we actually take that built-in mic signal and kind of hijack it kind of behind the scenes and allow you to inject it into the Thunderbolt driver and into the element control system. So uh, you've got built-in audio, uh, we take care of everything in the background, and then we allow you to route that wherever you want, route it to the headphones, uh, route it to the speakers if you really want to. But uh, it, it's a kind of a behind-the-scenes manipulation. Now, let's say you have the new MacBook Pro, and of course that doesn't have a built-in microphone. We allow you to and choose the, the, Mac, the, the Mac, Mac Pro. Tower. You're right. Excuse me. You have the new Mac Pro. Um, we allow you to choose any core audio source. So, for example, if you've got an Apogee mic, USB mic, uh, you can choose that as your core audio talkback source, and then route it to your performer's headphones. Um, and it's incredibly clever. We give you uh, very convenient software or hardware controls if you've got this uh, Apogee control in order to engage TalkBack. Makes it very convenient. Pretty cool. So you don't actually have to have a microphone on the interface right. to have TalkBack. So that's an Apogee-only secret. That's yeah. pretty cool tech there. Well, uh, that's a neat feature of the new Element series as well. well. Let's pull up our next question here, which is, I don't see any knobs and I don't see any buttons on the Element series. How do I adjust right. the headphones and the microphone gain? Right. You know, I remember when we first came out with Duet, and everyone was like, well, where are all the controls? And, well, you know what? We're giving you the most important controls, um, and a lot of it's in software. So really, with Element, this is the next logical step. What we find is more and more people are simply doing everything on their screen. They've got their DAW, um, and we've given them uh, several different ways to control the Element series. Um, by taking it off of the front panel, this really becomes a peripheral. It becomes an input-output peripheral. Um, and you know, perhaps it's on the ground in a convenient way. Uh, what we've replaced that with, first of all, we have Element Control. It's a software app uh, that uh, can be configured to take up a very small part of your screen. Um, it can also be, can, you can also use the keyboard arrows uh, back and forth. Um, and then finally, uh, so that's element control. Uh, we also have a uh, control iOS app. And the iOS app, uh, again, gives you a wireless control of your element series. Uh, one of the cool features in Logic Pro is uh, the ability to control your element input settings right from a Logic Control, uh, Logic Pro control strip, which is I mean, we've got this console. What do you have at the top of the console? You have the mic pre-controls. Really, we're, we're used to that idea. So in logic control, really at the top of your control strip, you have input gain for uh, Logic uh, Pro. If you've got the latest Logic Pro, and of course, like you do, the new MacBook, the new Pro, MacBook Pro with the touch bar, you can actually set your element gain in the touch bar. It's really cool to be able to do that. Really cool implementation. So those of you yeah. who do have that new Mac, 
um, you can take advantage of that. It's it's pretty cool. You can just slide your gain up and down right on the touch bar. Right. Um, and then finally, if you have to have hardware control, we do have a uh, USB wired uh, remote control. Uh, you can access your input and output settings incredibly quickly. Um, you've also got user assignable buttons. There's an incredibly long list of really cool functions that you can set these buttons for. Um, and this is almost a, a, a really clever um, and a highly useful way to control your element series. It can control two units, so you really have immediate control of up to 16 microamps all in a, a desktop so, package. So tell us a little bit more about this, Roger. So you say that you can have, so there's two units, two elements that you right. can use together on the same computer, right? Right. So you just plug, uh, you plug each one into your Thunderbolt ports. That's, yep. And then ele the software element control sees both units. You can adjust everything, so right. pretty cool. Yeah. So if you've got an element 24, let's say, and maybe your bandmate's got another one, you guys can come together, plug them in, have more channels. It's a, it's a pretty convenient little, uh, right. little feature. And again, we take care of, uh, in the driver and software, we take those two units and kind of make them into one super unit, in effect. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, the next question is, how does the Element series compare to other Apogee products as far as conversion quality? We get this question quite a bit. Right. Where does it rank in in the products? Is it Symphony grade? Is it where where does it kind of lie in that? Uh, right. Yeah. You know, you know I, I remember when Duet first came out. It truly was a revolution in portable interfaces. That is really all we do, is we are constantly evaluating new co components, the conversion components, the analog stage components. So we're always looking for the latest developments. And I think that we do this almost better than anyone. And so the Element series really benefits from being uh, very modern components. Um, and because of that, that really does um, put it slightly ahead of the Duet series. Now, Duet is really still an excellent interface. And in some ways, it's, it's a different marketplace. Um, Element is a Thunderbolt, uh, more uh, project studio. Duet is certainly uh, you know, more in the portable field. Um, Element series uh, is really quite uh, comparable to the uh, ensemble Thunderbolt. Now, with regard to our flagship product, Symphony IO, Symphony IO will always have uh, certain approaches, certain uh, component choices and design factors that will keep it, it will always be the flagship. Of course, it benefited uh, from this same uh, redesign beginning of this, uh, the beginning of last year. So it's, uh, it truly is the flagship product and always will be. Awesome. So basically, Symphony IO is still the king of the mountain. Yep. Ensemble Thunderbolt, Element Series, kind of right there next right to it, there. just, just yep. below. Yeah. We've got an interesting question here uh, that says, what about overload protection? How crisp and good is that on this device? And so the Element series and all Apogee interfaces actually have this really cool technology called soft limit. And so you can initiate soft limit uh, on your interface and that avoids digital overs. It's actually right. an analog limiting circuit. And right. I don't know if you want to elaborate on, on what soft limit is and, and how that works. But right, yeah. Um, and, and that's always, uh, everyone knows us to be a t digital company. But soft limit is and always has been um, in the analog section before the conversion stage. Um, and it, it's really designed initially, it was initially designed to act a little bit like tape, like analog tape. With analog tape, there's no attack or delay or decay. or There's no attack or release like you would have with a limiter. Um, it really is gently rounding kind of spurious transient peaks. Um, and that's exactly what soft limit is doing. Um, I know that there are some mixers who really rely on soft limit to catch uh, catch peaks before they uh, print their mixes. I, I always used to use soft limit when tracking drums, um, and I would use like you know turn up the the mic pre's nice and hot a little bit, and sometimes you would actually get a little bit of that. Right. Rojo, a little bit of that juice when you have soft limit. So the Element series does have that classic Apogee soft limit yeah. sound. Um, and, and you're absolutely right. You can actually overload soft limit kind of nicely. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's cool. It sounds cool on drums. It's also great on vocals. If you ever have a vocal, put soft limit on there just in case somebody gets uh, you know, extra loud. You have a little peak that comes up. It'll catch it right. before uh, you go over the meters there. 
So the next thing that's really cool about the Element series is the headphone amplifier. So not a lot of people think about headphone amplifiers, but Apogee came out with a really cool product last year called the Groove. If you haven't seen Groove, it's, it's really awesome. It's a little portable headphone amp. And a lot of that technology from Groove was included in the Element series. And so this is a, a really awesome headphone amp. But we get questions a lot. It's called Constant Current Drive is the technology behind the headphone amp. Right. Tell us a little bit about Constant Current Drive. What does it do? Why is it better than Why most other headphone amps? Right, yeah. Without getting too geeky about it, basically uh, when you've got a headphone and a, a headphone, an actual headphone and the headphone driver circuit, those two, when you connect the headphones, they actually interact in a very uh, dynamic way. In the same way as when you connect a speaker to amplifiers. Um, and virtually every headphone out there is what is known as voltage, constant voltage. Um, and that has certain pluses and minuses. And there are very, very few incredibly expensive high-end uh, headphone amplifiers that use constant current. Um, and so our designer found an incredibly clever and innovative way to take advantage of this uh, alternate architecture. But really, what do you get from it? Uh, basically, in our headphone driver, there is a compensating mechanism so that as uh, the two interface, uh, our headphone uh, driver actually compensates for the uh, non-linearities of your headphone in a, in a very active and immediate way. Um, the best way to really experiencing it, experience it, there are a set of very popular studio headphones that are known to be a bit harsh in the mid-highs. And I think we kind of all know who they are. Um, they're very popular, uh, very detailed, but they can be harsh. And it was really connecting these headphones where we discovered that uh, initially Groove and the constant current headphone um, on the Element series really helps to smooth out that kind of harshness and really adds a, a bit of a compensating or corrective factor uh, to the way that it drives the headphones. So what, like you say, b like you said before, um, it's uh, a more powerful headphone, but also uh, a, with the, there's a, a better equilibrium across the frequency response. It's pretty cool. If you, if you haven't heard the constant current drive yet, um, head over to your local music store and either find a Groove or an Element series, and just play a track that you're familiar with through some headphones and then A, B it versus directly into your computer into another audio interface. There's a pretty uh, awesome difference. If you have a chance to, to take a listen to that uh, constant current drive, uh, definitely yeah. do so. So we've taken uh, a few questions here from the stream. If you guys have any more, you can put them down here in the Facebook stream. Um, we also, of course, invite you to go to ApogeeDigital.com and click on uh, one of two buttons. We have one on there that says Chat with an Apogee Expert. And if you are on during the daytime, Pacific Standard Time, um, you can chat with a member of our team and ask any question about uh, Apogee interfaces or how it might work with your studio. And then if uh, it's after hours or you just want to send us an email, we do have a little button that says um, Ask Apogee there that will send a, an email message through to us too. So whatever sort of questions you have, please let us know. Um, we are going to be back on uh, hopefully next week, next and we'll week. answer some more of your uh, Ask Apogee questions. But um, I'm Rob Clark. I'm Roger Rubindere. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to catch you back next time.